Well, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to today's uh, training class on smartphones. Uh, I'm Chuck Renfro, I'm with Thinking Cat Technologies, and the reason we're doing smartphones is, well, a couple of reasons. This is because uh, this is the phone that the kids are playing with today when they're six years old. And, uh, and I'm sure you've seen that a lot. Uh, however, this is the phone that my kids had when they were six years old. And this is the phone that I had when I was six years old. Um, a little bit about ThinkCap Technologies. We are a company that's dedicated to working with senior citizens only in the field of technology. And um, we used to be a, a networking company, but we changed that years ago uh, because I was uh, giving a talk to a group of senior citizens at Henrico Police Department uh, and uh, also with Crime Stoppers. The, uh, another gentleman stood up and talked about Medicare and Medicaid. And uh, after he finished that, he said, now for more information, go to www. whatever it was, and hands went up. Uh, how do you do that? So at that time, I said, well, I wonder if we uh, have a need out there for working with seniors. So we changed the company. And uh, thinking CAP, as you can see, the letters all uh, in caps, C-A-P. The C stands for consulting. We work with individuals, uh, organizations, and uh, retirement communities. Uh, we assist you in training and support, such as classes like today, which is, this one's a little unusual, as you know and uh, protect. We're always looking for uh, security and various applications that help you. But today, again, we're going to talk about smartphones. Uh, there's really only three things you got to know about this technology. Now, one of them is uh, hardware. Uh, the other one is uh, the operating system and language. That's, we'll explain that later. And uh, the application, the app, the program, the software. Um, Hardware, I'm sure all of you recognize this. Uh, the old desktop computer that has that big box with the brains inside and it sits down on the floor and you have the screen and the speakers beside it. And this thing did everything you wanted to do. Now this is a piece of hardware. And um, if you want to know why they call it hardware, well I'll go ahead and tell you. That's because it's hard. I wish there was more explanation to that, but that's all it is. These things are nothing but big dumb boxes. And we'll get why we're gonna make them smart in a minute. But we had that desktop computer. Uh, young engineer came by and looked at that. He said, you know what I can do with that thing? I can make it smaller. So they created laptops. Had the brains built in, the screen, the keyboard, the speakers. The laptop did everything that the desktop did. But now it's portable. But that same engineer came by, he said, you know, what I can do with that, I can make it smaller. And they created tablets. The tablets, uh, brains built in, speakers built in, keyboard will pop up on the screen. The tablet did everything that the laptop did, that did everything that the desktop did. And uh, that's how far we've come in this technology. Except for one other thing. That engineer looked at that. He said, you know what I can do with that? I can make it smaller. And they created smartphones. Smartphones had the brains built in and the speakers built in. The smartphone did everything that the tablet did, did everything that the laptop did, that did everything that the desktop did. Not only that, it could also make a phone call. So really, yes, we do have a computer in our pocket, a full-fledged computer. But this is where it becomes interesting. You know, I've had a lot of people come to my class and they would say, uh, I'm scared of it. I, I, I don't want to touch it. I'm afraid I might break it. I always wonder why they said that. So I had to look back in time. Well, back in the olden days, we would sit at a desk and they'd put this big terminal on our desk and we had to type in a lot of commands and things to make it work. Well, if we typed in the wrong command, we broke it. And they would have to come out and reprogram everything. Well, those days are gone. As a matter of fact, in the olden days, at that old big desktop, if we wanted uh, a game, for example, 
Well, we get in our car and we drive down to the computer store and we picked up that game and we brought it back and we split that disc inside the computer. We typed in a bunch of commands and all the game came up. We thought that was great. Well, see, those days are gone now. We've now gotten to the point to where we look at that phone and it has all these pretty pictures on it. We call them uh, apps, or I like to call them buttons. So we've gotten to the point to where we only use this. We go, I want to do that. We touch one of those and it comes up and immediately works for us. And the biggest thing is, is we have a button down at the bottom. And that button we call the home button. So when you finish something, all you have to do is touch that button and it makes it go away. It brings you right back to your main screen. We call that uh, going home. So whatever you touch, even if you touch the wrong thing, all you have to do is go home. Touch the home button. It brings you right back out. You cannot break these things. You cannot hurt these things. You cannot make it do something wrong unless you purposely want to do it. Now, I have had another class as to where I said, we have a physical button down here. I have discovered that uh, some phones, they have a, a little circle right at the bottom of the screen. That's the home button. Well, now even some of the newer phones, they have said, well, slide up with your finger and that will take you home. But either way, whatever you touch, you finish with it, you go home. It's that simple. Something with dumb boxes, so what makes them uh, intelligent? Well, it's called the operating system. Now, the operating system, uh, this is my only technical slide I got. Operating system communicates with the, uh, with the computer brain without knowing how to speak that computer language. Without an operating system, the computer is useless. But let me explain this a little bit further for you. I'm going to take you all to another planet. Now, it, it looks like our planet, but that's the best I could do at the time. Uh, as you can see on this other planet, we have the, the land of Apple, uh, a big country over there at Microsoft, another country called Google, and we have another company that uh, the others, uh, that doesn't pertain to us, that's for big corporations and things. But in the land of Apple, Apple says, if you come to my country, you better speak my language. Because that's the way we operate, that's our system. That's our operating system. And in the land of Apple, they speak the language of iOS. That's the way they do it, work. Now Microsoft saw this, they go, wait a minute. We're the big boys, we've been around a long time. We don't understand that iOS stuff. So if you come to our land, you come to our country, you better speak our language. And our language is Windows. Now there's many flavors of Windows, but it's Windows. Now Google was watching all this, and they go, you know, those people on planet Earth, they have all these things coming out called tablets and smartphones and things. We better create a language for our country. And so they did. So if you go to the land of Google, you better speak their language. And their language is Android. Google wrote Android. Now, what had happened was Microsoft and Google started yelling out to all those hardware manufacturers hey, you want to use our language in your box because we think our language is the best. And uh, some of the companies would say, you know, like HP, hey, we like that Windows stuff. Let's put Windows in our box. Uh, other companies like uh, Samsung or uh, LG, they said, you know, we like that uh, Android stuff from Google. We ought to put that in our box. You notice I didn't say anything about Apple because Apple did not yell out to the manufacturers. Apple says, we're going to make our own hardware. We think that's better. So Apple made their own hardware. That means that you cannot buy anything but an Apple product that runs iOS. The other uh, operating systems, they're the ones that are competing back and forth. So let's get to know a little bit about our smartphones. We're going to build this up layer by layer. This is what's happening. 
Smartphones have become the Swiss Army knife of technology. It does everything, and they keep adding more and more things onto it. You want a security camera system for your house? You better have a smartphone because the way it's going to, uh, that's where you're going to look at things. And that's the way things are going to be operated it's from that smartphone. Uh, a lot of health situations, such as testing your blood and things, uh, they put that on a smartphone. So again, it's the Swiss Army knife of technology. And there are many different types of smartphones. As I'll point out a few, there's your iPhone, that's uh, Apple, LG, Samsung, uh, the list goes on. But you know what? They all do the same thing, just do it in different ways. Sometimes a button may be up on a screen of one piece of hardware, and that same button may be down at the bottom of the screen on another. We just have to hunt for it. So let's talk about some of the features. We'll look at uh, general settings and uh, Wi-Fi, and security, things like that. Settings. Let me point this out. Uh, on your smartphone, everything is an application. Everything. Even the phone call itself is an app. And for settings, you just look for your settings application. As you can see, it'll even say settings. They, all these applications here, they all, if you don't know what they are, they have the names right under it. And all you have to do is just touch that settings button. And this is what comes up. This one is, uh, by touching this, you get, um, there's an iPhone settings, I'll show you that again. Here's the Apple. There's an Android settings. As you can see, they all look just about the same. So why do we concern ourselves about settings? Well, settings controls the entire smartphone, from uh, adjusting your screen to making it sound different to ringtones, but this is why we want to get there first. In the olden days, when you bought that flip phone, that cell phone, well, I'll pick on Verizon, they're the big boys, well, what they did was they said you can have this smartphone, or the, I'm sorry, the cell phone, and you're going to have a voice plan. You have so much voice time that you can talk over a month, so many minutes that they'll give you. If you go over that and talking, well, they're going to charge you extra. Well, that's sort of gone away now because with smartphones, they'll tell you we uh, don't care how long you talk, and you can talk across the country as long as you want. Because what they did is they knew that the smartphone was a computer. And the computer uses data, digits, numbers. That's the way computers talk. So what Verizon did and all the other companies, they put in another signal, just like that. And in that other signal, they added a data plan. Now, on now, they're going to give you X amount of data that you can use per month. If you go over that, they're going to add on to your contract. So that means even though you do have X amount, and generally it's about two gigabytes, that's in the billions, um, that means you can take the smartphone and you can connect to the internet by using their towers, it goes to their Verizon, and on out to the internet. Just like you have your house here, and that's connected to Verizon, and you have internet and everything in your house, and you can go out to the internet that way. Well, that's pretty good, but you are limited a little bit. And uh, with that cell tower, well, cellular, that goes in miles. That means you can drive anywhere. But then we have some other ways to connect to the make connection to the internet, make connection to many different things. Wi-Fi, and then that goes in feet, uh, maybe 800, 1200 feet. Depends. Uh, Bluetooth, I'll just mention that one now. Uh, Bluetooth goes in inches. And uh, that's a little communication device. And if you ever seen somebody walking down the street with that little thing in their ear and they're talking, well, that little thing in their ear is nothing but a microphone and a speaker. And it's communicating to their smartphone in their pocket. It's going in inches. I'll tell you, tell you a few other things about Bluetooth later. But more importantly, Wi-Fi. What is Wi-Fi? Well, when I was a kid, not too long ago, 
We used to play Army. And uh, my parents gave me a child set of walkie-talkies. I gave one to my friend. He went to one end of the house, I was on the other. And I'd call him, I'd go, walkie-talkie one to walkie-talkie two. And he would answer, and we could hear him, so we stopped laughing, we thought that was great. Now, if my friend went out to my neighbor's yard, we couldn't talk because he was too far away. They were a child set of walkie-talkies. Well, that's what Wi-Fi is. It's a set of walkie-talkies. And in your smartphone, you have walkie-talkie one. And when you turn it on, it will yell out, walkie-talkie one to walkie-talkie two. And walkie-talkie two is somewhere located in the ceiling. And it's a little device that we call a router. And in the back of that device, device they have an internet cable plugged into it. So you can connect to walkie-talkie two. Now, when walkie-talkie two hears you, He'll yell back to my name is Walkie Talkie 2, and my name of this router is. And I'm going to show you how that works. As you can see, it's radio waves. That's all this is. And you may see this little device right here. If you have one in your house, connecting to the internet and your cable TV and everything else, that's the router. That's the Walkie Talkie 2. Well, what we do is we have to go to that settings. And we have to turn it on. Turn on Wi-Fi. Make sure it turns on. And when it turns on, it's yelling out. And then all the walkie-talkie twos that are close to you, they'll start coming up on the screen. And you'll see their names, such as if you were in Starbucks. Well, you'd see Starbucks. Say, so I'm walkie-talkie two. My name is Starbucks. Now, if you see a little padlock beside the name, that means it requires a password. Now, if you don't know the password, don't even go there because you can't get into it. If it doesn't have a padlock, it doesn't require a password. That's pretty neat. Now, I said Wi-Fi goes in feet, 800, 1,200 feet. And if you look at all these places like Starbucks or Publix, many other places, well, you'll see a big sign on their door that says, free Wi-Fi. And uh, they know that you cannot sit out in the parking lot and use it. You have to go into their store to use that Wi-Fi because it's free. Well, while you're in there, I'm sure that you're going to buy something. That's why they do it. But why do we want to get on Wi-Fi? Well, you remember that data plan, and that data plan uh, lets you use uh, the data on your uh, smartphone, but if you go with that, well, it'll cost you. Well, what if you want to watch a movie or something on your smartphone, which you can, uh, that'd probably take you over your data plan. But when you go into Wi-Fi, you're now using someone else's internet, and your data plan stops. It cuts off. You're not using the data plan. So, while you're in there, you can do somebody else's internet, you can watch movies, you can do anything, and it's not going against your data plan. But when you walk out, it, your phone will automatically know that you're too far away now from walkie-talkie too, and it will switch you right back to your data plan. So that's why we are looking for it. Uh, I brought this up, because uh, I'm talking about going to the internet and things, but you may have heard this term, uh, going to the cloud. So, what is the cloud? Well, uh, I hate to burst your bubble here, and uh, I'd like to say that I can be very technical about this, but the cloud is nothing more than the new name for the internet. That's all it is. Now, what is the internet? Well, the internet is millions and millions and millions of miles of cables connected to millions and millions and millions of computers. And all those computers are owned by someone and they all have specific jobs. And your computer, your smartphone, is talking to one of their computers. Now, let's pick on Google for example. Google has a lot of different uh, things that they offer, such as 
email. They got Gmail for their uh, for Google, and what they've done is they've taken a computer server, a big big box, and they said this one we're going to dedicate to handling email. Now this computer over here, we're going to dedicate to uh, storing uh, pictures and things. Now this computer over here, we're going to dedicate to uh, being a backup or offering applications. This computer over here, we're going to make that one search other computers, such as Google that. And what happens if you want to check your email? Well, your smartphone, your computer, will go through the internet, whether it's through that cell tower or through Wi-Fi, it goes through the internet, connects to that computer, and it checks on your email. Now, all those computers, they say, uh, we need a uh, name and password, and I know that's frustrating, but you gotta think, uh, companies do that for their security also. They wanna know who's coming into their computer. That's why you set up names and passwords. So, when you get in, check your email, you go out. If you wanna search other computers, you go to Google Search Computer, and they'll type in what you wanna look for, and it'll find it through the internet. So that's how all this is working. Now, what we end up is something that looks like this. This would be the internet, this would be the cloud. As you can see, we have computers that do data and storage backup, email, photos, services, music, documents, a whole list of things. But there's one that we really want to get to. And that's the one that's storing all of our applications. You see, you get these smartphones, and these things can do something for you. An application, the program, the software. There is an app for that. Now, right now, you know, we talked about you running down and getting that program from that computer store. Let's think about the programmer that wrote that. Well, in the olden days, he had to sit down at his computer and he wrote that program. Maybe it was a game. Then he uh, had to buy a couple of thousand blank CDs and copy onto that disc, that game. Then he hired a company to make a box. Then he hired for that disc, he, made a, he hired another company to decorate that box. And then he hired a trucking firm to take those boxes down to the computer store and they put it on the shelf and he sits back and says, I hope somebody buys one because I just invested a lot of money. Those days have gone. Now that same programmer will write that program, that app, that application. He, and maybe he wrote it in uh, iOS for Apple. He calls up Apple and he's got this game. They say, send it to him. Touches a button goes up to their uh, computer that stores all the applications. They say, we like that, we're gonna put it out there for the public. Didn't cost him anything. Maybe uh, the people from Google heard about that game and they say, hey, rewrite that game in Android and send it to us. So he rewrites it and sends it on. Because of that simple capability that didn't cost that programmer any money, we now have millions of programmers out there writing solutions to problems. Right now, we have over two million applications available for Android and uh, for iOS. Everything that you can think of. If you can think it, there's probably an app for that. And if you say, well, gee, how come there's so many programmers? Well, if you want to be a programmer, there's an app for that too. The application makes the hardware and the operating system do something for you personally. There are so many apps out there. You may have hobbies. You may want turn-by-turn -turn directions. Many different things are available to you. And you can get them all by getting the apps that you are looking for. Now, getting apps. Like I said, everything is really a computer. Uh, and over at uh, Apple, they have their computers. They said, this computer, we're going to set up for holding all of our applications. And these computers, we call them a store. 
And then they name those stores, such as uh, Apple. They have the App Store. And over at Google with their Android, their computer, their store, they call theirs the Play Store. And even Microsoft, now that they've gotten into Windows 10, they are now using applications. And uh, they call theirs the Microsoft Store. You'll see it on if you have a Windows 10 computer. Now, to get to these stores, Apple says, well, you've got to give us name and password. And uh, they uh, ask for a credit card up front. They said their philosophy is, and all this is philosophies. They said that um, our philosophy is it makes it real easy if you come across an app that costs money. Well, we just charge it to your credit card that we have on file. Uh, Android, uh, they just said no. Anytime you want to get something that is uh, costs money, type in a credit card number at that time. So there's no right or wrong, it's philosophies. I will say that uh, I would say 90% of the applications that are available to you are free. That's right, they're free. Of course, I know you're asking that one big question, so how is that programmer making money? Well, does it buy advertising? Advertisers will pay him money so they can put their ads in the middle of a game or in the middle of an application. But if you don't like the uh, advertising, well, the program has a premium version that you can pay money for. So either way, he's going to get money either from you for premium or from the advertisers. As you can see, I mean, this is a quick sample of applications. Everything on your phone is an app. And uh, put up Google, Gmail, Facebook, that's an app. Skype, that's being able to uh, talk back and forth over the internet and you can see and talk just like uh, what the scientists promised us many years ago that we'd had video telephone when well, now you've got it in your hand. There's uh, additional apps. Like I said, there's over two million, so I just picked out just a few for you. Uh, of course, turn by turn directions using maps, uh, weather apps, Pandora Music, uh, here's one, Stone Cards, S-T-O-C-A-R-D. That's an application that will uh, hold uh, all your loyalty cards, such as your CVS card and uh, your Kroger card, things like that. It actually takes a picture of your loyalty cards. So when you're in the store and they say, do you have your card? You go, yes, I do. And you just touch that app and it brings up the card. There are many other um, applications that are, are there. One of them that has become fascinating is Translate. Now, Translate, uh, it's uh, Google Translate, and it's uh, an app that speaks just about all the languages on the planet Earth. You can talk or type to that uh, app in English and say Trans translate this into Spanish or French, and it immediately does it. You can set it to conversational mode, and you can have a conversation with someone from another country. Uh, using English as your language, and maybe uh, Spanish as their language, and you can talk back and forth, and it, the phone will tell you what they just said. But one of the added features that uh, I found out from Chesterfield uh, Museum is that Translate now can use the camera and read something, maybe a poster in English, and it will translate it into another language. So people coming into the Chesterfield Museum, if they're from another country such as France, we can give them a tablet and they can hold the tablet up against the poster and it will translate it into French. These things are just becoming remarkable. The cameras, well, we do have a front camera and uh, yeah, call that you can use it for selfies take a picture of yourself that uh, front camera is also used for uh, FaceTime from uh, the Apple iOS or Skype and there's many other uh, capabilities so you can talk and see the person no matter where they're located on the planet Earth the back cameras Everybody's taking pictures of everything because we don't have to have them developed anymore. So you can take some pretty fine pictures. And um, 
these cameras are extremely sophisticated. You don't have to do anything. I took uh, one picture. This one, I hope you can see this. When we had the uh, World Bicycling Championship here at Richmond, the uh, planes and helicopters were flying over the news people. I just took uh, my smartphone I said, oh, look at that, and just clicked it. And I caught that. That is a helicopter. And if you notice something about that helicopter, this camera is so sophisticated that it froze the blade as it was spinning around. That's how great these things are. Everyday uses for cameras, oh my goodness. Uh, taking pictures of labels, comparing prices of different things. Uh, if you're over at Short Pump, in that big parking lot, take a picture of where you parked at. As a matter of fact, there's an app that will take a satellite view of where you parked, and it will lead you turn by turn walking back to your car. Uh, car accidents, just whip your smartphone out, take a picture of the accident, take all the important information. Um, Rental cars, you know, you do that walk around, and the salesman will say, oh, that scratch was already there, and we'll take note of that. No, you take a picture of it, so you have a notation of it. Uh, confirmation numbers, airline tickets, all this could be captured. Uh, men making repairs, when you're taking something apart, take a picture of each part you take it off, so you know how to put it back together. Um, scanning documents. Scanning documents, that means taking a picture of important documents. And uh, this is where I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit, especially in today's times. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we mentioned about uh, taking, uh, we had to have names and passwords for everything that we got into, our banks and even our phones themselves. Please do me a favor and write the name and the password to whatever location you're going to. Write that in a book or take pictures of it and put it onto a storage device and let your family know where that book or device is located because if something should happen to you, they cannot get into anything unless they have the names and passwords. How far have we come? The 2020 Ford F-150 pickup truck has more technology built into it than John Glenn had when he was orbiting the Earth. Our smartphones have more technology built into it than the gentleman had when they landed on the moon. This is how far we've come and it's going even further. Because of these days and times, uh, we have services from our company that we could go out to your house for X amount of money or whatever, but uh, we can't do that but I can offer you some help. So what I've done is, uh, I'm Chuck Renfro. Here's my uh, company email address, crenfro at thinkingcaptechnologies.com, or you can type in info at thinkingcaptechnologies.com. Or here's my direct telephone number. Give me a call. If you need some help, I will try to help you over the phone and uh, we'll answer any questions that you may have. Uh, our gift to you. Thank you very much for attending our class.